Hey everybody, this is episode number 52 of the Fair Compare video podcast. My name is Rick Sini, the CEO and co-founder of FairCompare.com. And I'm Ann McDermott, the editor at Fair Compare, and today we're going to talk about all kinds of things, including how to avoid airline fees and much, much more. But since Rick is the brains of this operation, I will turn it over to you, pal. Yeah, and, and Anne, we're also going to take a question from the customer, one of my favorite things to do on the podcast. And we're going to also learn a little bit about an event. Uh, I think it's just slightly north of sub-Saharan Africa. We'll check that out here in a minute at a particular music festival. And uh, we'll get to that at the very tail end of the podcast. Article out of uh, how to avoid the worst airline fees. I've talked about fees so much, it's so incredibly difficult to actually nowadays sort of avoid them. But there's some hidden fees like uh, the change fee that you need to be really aware of. Now, there's some airlines like Southwest that don't have a change fee, some of them have a reduced change fee, but generally, the change fee in the US is. Uh, around $200 uh, for domestic flights, $300, and I've even seen it up to $400 for international flights. And, and people are always uh, saying, you know, th that's one of the common questions you see in travel advice columns and in podcasts and things, how to avoid this. Well, you know, so many of us, obviously, we buy the cheapest tickets, and frequently the cheapest tickets are what they call non-refundable, and non-refundable means what it says. However, there is one... There is one out that 24-hour window. <laughs> yeah, the, I, in Texas we have we call it the lemon law, right? So if you buy a car, you have a time period to say this is a lemon and ditch it. Uh, if you think your ticket's a lemon, you have 24 hours. Now I will caution you that the airlines, like American Airlines, you have to actually hold the ticket if you want to do this. Actually, as a you know what? They recently they recently changed that. So they're all on the same page now. Uh, and American didn't publicize it, so a lot, uh, hardly anybody knows. But uh, they're just like the all the others, which is you, you have 24 hours to refund, uh, get your money back after you book a ticket. Yeah, so just be aware that in theory some airlines could be you know, only providing the hold function. But essentially you get 24 hours to basically ditch your ticket. Yeah. Um, and that's a good thing. For example, if you're trying to split your ticket purchase, uh, let's say, for example, we've, we've talked about this tip before. Um, you've got four people going. You, you do a search for four people. Then you do a search for one person. You see some cheaper seats. That glitch in the reservation system that requires all four people to be at the same price. You want to split your ticket purchase because there's three cheaper seats. So you want to get three on one and one on another. You could actually uh, – used to it was um, – it was complicated because you were really worried if I bought this one and the other one I couldn't buy and could I maybe my kids were part of the group and I couldn't sit next to my kids the DOT has actually come out with new rules about kids under 12 years old the airlines having to accommodate sitting them and then you have this 24 hour rule so even if you made a mistake for whatever decided and there was some glitch and the price went up after you bought it because you couldn't press the button twice simultaneously you can still dump that ticket so those two rules together are definitely there to to help the consumer, so just be aware of those particular ones. It's how you avoid uh, getting stuck with a more expensive ticket. One of the fees that uh, I, I think is 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 very easy to avoid, and it's it's so simple, and it's it's really you know the reason for going to fair compare in the first place is that you know every ticket has embedded <laughs> various government fees and taxes. In other words, they're embedded, so you've got to pay it. It's part of the ticket price. Right. But how to lower that and lower those fees <laughs> is to comparison shop and get alerts and sign up for alerts and buy a cheaper ticket. That's sort of the number one way, certainly, to avoid those internal fees. It, um, I, I know we talk about those internal fees. My, my I have this vision of my phone bill, yeah. where where yeah. you know my phone costs ten dollars and the fees are three thousand dollars, <laughs> and there's a list is all you know the length of my arm of all these crazy fees that are on there. So um, they're embedded in there. Trust me on that. Um, including the uh, the carry and post surcharge, which which they used to call the fuel surcharge until the price of oil went down. 
Well, I was recently comparing fares because I was thinking, okay, if somebody does go to this cheap airlines website directly, right. you know, maybe they will get the cheapest flight. Yep, sometimes they do, but uh, far more often, another airline had a better fare. So if you only go to uh, yeah, sure. a single airline site, you know, you're you're fooling yourself. Yeah, I know we always talk about sort of optional fees like food and drink. Um, certainly bringing your own lunch is, a, is an interesting option. you got to be a little bit careful if you're bringing it through security, but you might get it in security. I know a lot of people that have empty water bottles that fill up uh, before they get in because they like to have them. And, and, and many flights, especially ones over an hour and a half or two, you're going to start to lose uh, some of your fluids in the dry air. Um, so that ha I see that all the time, and people actually doing that to save some money because I think a bottle of water inside the airport is about four million dollars. So, <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not that bad actually, <laughs> but uh, it's it's way more than you would buy at your grocery store. Believe me on that, and you can't carry it through security, so that's a big problem there. And and then you know the one we've always talked about has been the bag fee, right? Certainly carrying it on. Um, there's credit cards that will refund you some of these fees as well, and um, depending, I've seen at least the card I have reimburses for pre-check, global entry, any of the fees the airlines impose up to $200. Typically, those cards have a little more uh, are a little more expensive yearly fee on the card itself, so you're basically making the uh, the yearly fee, the annual fee on the card back in some of these cases. But so there's there's ways to get around them. You can check out the article we have on the site and uh, the funny thing is is that I was just laughing the other day we were, we were packing for a trip a month ago or so my my wife finagled a half of my daughter's bag on this particular trip <laughs> but you should have seen the negotiation that went on it was pretty amazing actually um, so you know Moving on from fees, there, we, we did a little uh, column for Investopedia, which was fun to do, on some of the best cheap fun destinations. I mean, fun could be uh, mean something different to different people, but um, I, I picked the ones which I thought were really good pricing and some of the good pricing as well as some interesting sort of semi-off-the-beaten places. And some of these are, are perfect for fall, like um, you mentioned Boston, you know, and then from there, you can go throughout New England, and Boston is traditionally cheap from so many other parts of the country. Right. So that's, a, that's a great place to get away to. And uh, another in the U.S. is uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. We've been seeing a lot of deals to Albuquerque. I, I'm not sure why, but uh, but we're glad. Yeah, I, think, I, glad I think it's a demand. Yeah, so I think and it's, not, it's, a short, it's a relatively short drive. I Actually, I actually was born in El Paso, Texas, which is a, a stone's yeah. throw from Albuquerque, so I'm familiar with the area. Um, and uh, so it's a, it's a it's an awesome place. I mean, Santa Fe and reminds me a bit of of Aspen. If you've ever been to Aspen, for example, a uh, really fun place to visit and sort of off the beaten path. Not easy to fly into directly. You still have to do a little bit of driving, which is which is okay. That means typically a rental car of some sort. And uh, well, let's let's move to another uh, a beaches. Let's go to beaches. And, yeah, sure. Uh, there are uh, we've been seeing so many, and thanks to uh, I guess you know Southwest and uh, JetBlue earlier getting into Caribbean right. in a big way. I mean, man, we've seen uh, NASA, Aruba, Bermuda has been get, getting particularly cheap. Of course, it it's not going to be as hot as. Uh, the you know real Caribbean destinations, <laughs> the real Carib Caribbean, yeah. So it's like, well, the Triangle there in Bermuda is a cool place. So just stay away from it. Um, yeah, Bermuda's always been relatively inexpensive. It has a lot of snowbirds from the northeast that fly in there. Uh, Aruba, Nas just uh, off the northern coast of South America, um, and Nassau definitely a couple. Aruba, great beaches, by the way. Nassau, some really good resorts there if people are, are certain, clearly. Uh, and those price points and historically, especially during wintertime, during some peak wintertime seasons, 
you know, anywhere from 700 to 1,000, they've dropped slightly. And in the off-peak times, I've seen them as low as the high 300s, some in the low 400s. That's a great deal to the Caribbean. You're talking about round-trip prices, right? Round-trip prices, yeah, not one way. Those are round-trip prices. So um, definitely some uh, some activity in that area. We actually wrote a, a big piece on using a bunch of data on the southwest effect to the Caribbean, for example, uh, with their big... Uh, a new uh, um, international terminal down there in Houston. So we're going to see that grow, hopefully. Plus, we also have Cuba being added into the mix of the Caribbean oh, as well recently. <laughs> so uh, I know it's just a, I think you can almost throw a rock between the Southern Keys and, and Cuba. It's not too far. It's a really easy flight. But I think what you're going to find is Cuba, after some time, it's going to take some time to build it up, will be very similar in pricing to places like uh, Puerto Rico, for example. So it's going to be pretty good pricing into there as well, which might drag down some of the prices to these other Caribbean uh, destinations. Currently, we've been seeing uh, JetBlue has had a sale like uh, 99 right. bucks one way, and uh, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. So to my faith, let's let's sort of. Uh, span the globe here and take a, a little uh, a tour to the right. Uh, let's go a little eastbound over the Atlantic and check out Europe from the U.S. Um, you've got, uh, uh, you know, one of the cities that I went to two, three years ago that I absolutely fell in love with was Barcelona. The Barcelona at a beach is where we stayed. It was awesome. Um, so that a really cool place to visit. So many different attractions. The food, oh, and promise me. The food is ridiculous. <laughs> Get out of here on the food. And then, um, you know, and we also talk about the Nordic countries, Scandinavian countries. Um, a lot of this has to do with some of these low-cost carriers flying in there, Norwegian Air flying in there, Iceland Air um, as well. Wow, doing that as well uh, out of the northeast. Um, and so you've got com countries like Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland sort of in that group. And it's hard to pass that up, and especially Especially in the summertime, it's a great place to visit. Um, we actually had here somebody at the office just get back from Reykjavik in Iceland. Uh, so they were doing a little volcano hopping over there. <laughs> great place to visit uh, right here in September and October. It's also uh, uh, a great place to visit. Now, one place that I haven't been, Anne, that I, that I noticed made the list was uh, the former Yugoslavian cities, Dubrovnik and Split. And I have been there, Croatia, I highly recommend it. They are just so beautiful. You feel like you've stepped back into right. beautiful times. And uh, uh, anybody who has, is a fan of Game of Thrones, which I'm not <laughs> super familiar with, but if you know that, you will instantly recognize so many backdrops from that. So there is that. But it's just, even if you don't care about so, it. You, about so if I say Jon Snow, do you swoon? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I give up. <laughs> He's alive again. Yeah, so. Anyway, you'll have to. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a I'm a I'm a Game of Throner. So, but and I and yeah, so I, New Zealand and uh, split into Dubrovnik to get that uh, that Game of Thrones feeling. Oh, I'd love to go to New Zealand, New Zealand or Australia, uh, and those are on the list too. And you can see the whole list we uh, in the Investopedia column. Right. Just go to Investopedia and uh, CENI, which is S-E-A-N-E-Y. You know, I always, people ask me when I go on the radio, how do they pronounce it? I always go S-E-A like the ocean and above your shin. So uh, that's uh, for those phonetic, for phonetically challenged people out there. Um, okay, so let's, let's sort of hop over to a question from a customer. Um, I, I usually don't see these till the day of, so why don't you help me fill in one here? This is from Cadigan. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Cadigan from Milwaukee. Right. He says, uh, when is the best time to buy plane tickets to the Dominican Republic for a family spring break in this coming spring, 2017, and what might you expect to pay? Now, Cadigan says, I already found one for six hundred, like $606 per person with good times, each way from Milwaukee to UJ, and that's got to be Punta Cana, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So I, I think well, you have a you have a yeah you have a, a couple of different places you can fly into, but definitely uh, Punta Cana is the most resort oriented area, and that, and that is exactly right. The ticket prices right now, um, depending on which day, and I don't know when their spring break is. It could be sort of. 
mid mid to late March, let's assume. I guess you know, in some cases, some people's spring break is in early April, uh, but generally that price historically has been out in the Milwaukee area. Now, remember, in the Milwaukee area, also within Stone's Throw, have Chicago a little bit, not Stone's Throw, a pretty pretty lengthy drive that you can fly from too, especially if, if it's going to be super expensive out in Milwaukee. But that price point would be in the five uh, high five hundreds. I'm looking at one of the tools we have here on the site. Um, and that's not unusual. That's for purchasing right now. They don't change a whole lot now. I would probably wait a little bit until sort of the mm, kind of mid-November, early December time frame. Typically, you want to shop for international trips starting about five months in advance. You're getting close here uh, in, in late October, early November. Uh, they tend to not manage these seats, uh, and in some cases, uh, domestically, they don't manage them until about three, three and a half months before departure. So that's when you want to start looking. That doesn't mean, necessarily mean that's when you want to start buying. I would shoot for a price, uh, and they, they were looking at some prices there in the low 600s. That's not terrible because the, probably the best price they're going to get during spring break, and, and it depends too, by the way. And if you go Saturday to Saturday or Sunday to Sunday, you should go ahead and buy your ticket in that high 500, low 600 range. But if you decide to go like four or five nights, leave on a Tuesday, come back on a Saturday or a Sunday, you can probably find it for about 50 to 60 bucks uh, cheaper per person. And that's what I would shoot for. If, if you want to take a shorter trip, leave a little bit later in the week for spring break. That's what we've done in many cases in the US. You're looking at sort of mid to low 500s. Otherwise, if you do Saturday to Saturday, many times the airlines know exactly when those prices are for your spring break are, and you'll see them jump seven to 700 and 800 dollars round trip. So definitely buy that before the end of the year, uh, and look for that price right in the high 500s, low 600s is a pretty good price. Would this be a good situation to set an airfare alert for? No, absolutely. I would come to the site immediately and um, and do a, a couple different dates, set up some alerts. You'll get some feedback on what the price is. You'll see which airlines are actually flying that particular route. Um, you can see, for example, uh, you know, out of Milwaukee, you have a couple di the major legacy airlines, American United. Um, uh, I have flights and you could, you're basically going to be connecting one stop, sometimes through Chicago, sometimes through Philadelphia. If it's American, you might inc that might include Charlotte, for example. Um, and if you're on Delta, it, it'll probably connect you through Atlanta. So they all tend to have multiple connections in there. So if you're looking for one stops, definitely that's what you need to do. And our friend in Milwaukee, we thank you for your question. If yeah, anybody sure. else has a question for Rick, please send it to customer.service at faircompare.com, and Rick will help you out. Absolutely. So, Anne, what, what's last on the list here for the podcast? Last on the list is our Adventurous Event of the Week. Adventurous is our app, and it's also on our website, uh, like in a blog type of form. It's cool, even if you're not looking for fun stuff, it's cool because it's beautiful pictures. Yeah, it's fun to look through. I was actually looking at the OS ASUS Festival, which yeah, is in Marrakesh. Uh, and it's actually going to be coming up in the next uh, few days, actually, in the middle of September here. Uh, so it's uh, not super expensive, and the pictures are pretty awesome. Uh, my daughter is starting to... Teach me a little bit about electronic music. I'm not. Uh, I, I'm. I've been listening to Zach Brown the past week, <laughs> but uh, he's not in the electronic category. <laughs> so I have. I've been learning a little bit about some of these names. You know, Sputnik and Jeff Mills uh, and Dixon, for example. So I'm slowly. And I'm. And you know, I used to actually see the songs pop up on my uh, on my iTunes account because we shared an account. Now everything's on you know, either Spotify or Apple Music. So I don't see uh, all those things popping up from time to time, which I like to. I, I sort of like all music. So uh, clearly, this is a is an interesting resort. I've seen the pictures on the side, beautiful pool there at the resort, yeah. um, and definitely looks like a place to be hanging out here in the next week or so. Well, it's, it's got, you know, it's, it's more than just a big party, although that's, there's nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. but uh, it's got like art, it's got like a, a marketplace, it's got, well, you know, you're surrounded by the Sahara and the, uh, the Atlas Mountains, so it's, you know, it's got to be just gorgeous. 
But yeah. also, we are told that you can hang out with some of the artists after their sets over drinks. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no problem. Yes, it won't be. Uh, it, it won't be any of the artists who are in the top ten category. I doubt. But uh, yeah, it's, it looks like you can hang out. I, you know, one of the, these interest these locations, and I see these locations all the time. I'm a member of several lists of, of things, you know, for interesting things to do, and I've seen this one pop up before, so it looks like it might be fun. So if you're interested in that, more importantly, download our app on, on your uh, either your iPhone or your Android phone. Uh, check it out. There's being updated all the time. I, I saw another three or four today. It's being updated every day, actually. Um, so you'll see, you know, probably half a dozen to a dozen new ones, and the, old, the ones from the previous year being updated with some of the current information as well. Also, you can set up alerts really easily to see if there's any good prices out of your city. And thank you all for listening. Hey, thanks.